I dedicate this first portion of my talk to our beloved keyboardist, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> this is either going to make or break the talk. <laughs> Saint Spock once said, Spiritualism, the final frontier. <laughs> is she giving me daggers yet with her eyes? Oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> this action figure and I see uh, Andrew too and I'm like, hmm, I'm trying to look a lot alike and I'm thinking back to Elba's talks about aliens being on earth to raise the vibration and I'm like, nah. <laughs> So good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is an honor and a privilege to speak with you all this morning. I would like to thank Alva and the Divine Light Board of Directors for inviting me to speak this morning. My spirit guides and my guardian angel are as much the authors of today's talk as I am. And I thank my angel guides and I also thank my guardian angel for their love, protection, and guidance. And I also thank Jesus for his love, and his support, and giving me the strength and faith to deliver the message today of love, humor, and faith. Now, I've already tried to bring a little bit of the humor part to the talk, <laughs> and now it's for the rest. I'm going to share some of my thoughts and feelings on what has been in my heart Originally, this talk was only going to be on the topic of faith alone. But uh, I was writing a couple of drafts, and the, the talk was just, uh, every time I, I completed one whole talk and I looked at it, and I went, oh, man, no. I mean, for me, it was just bad. But on the good note, I think that I had found the cure to insomnia. So I'm going to try and give that talk another time. If you're all tired and you really need a good night's rest, uh, we'll put it on a CD. You can, you know, play it before you go to sleep. But, uh, oh, that would help me. but uh, anyways, I was thinking to what uh, Bonnie and Sharon and Barb taught us in level one uh, a spiritual development class to do. And that was to still our minds, close our eyes, concentrate on our breathing. And then I also remember Reverend Elba's loving words of trust in the process and believe in yourself. So this morning I'm going to do just that. The reason I am choosing to talk about love and humor with the topic of faith is that I honestly believe that it is very lacking in this world today. We only have to look at the example of the Moncton shooting a few days ago to see that the world is truly, truly, truly off balance. The energies are not good, even when we look at our uh, provincial elections that are coming up, there's great, when I try to connect with the energies, there seems to be a great amount of angst and uneasiness amongst the people. And you know, uh, going back to the Moncton incident, I, I think about what the citizens of Monc Moncton must be feeling right now, and especially people who actually witnessed the horrible shooting that uh, the suspect, Justin Burke, uh, who is the alleged perpetrator of, these hor of this horrible occurrence, did shooting RCMP constables and apparently, by all reports, without remorse. And you know, I begin to think what that would do to one's faith. Are these people ever going to allow themselves to feel anything but fear and distrust 
Are they going to let fear and distrust rule their lives from this day forward? Can anything be done to restore their faith in God, in humankind? And I think about the rest of us. How is our faith in our day-to-day -day struggles? What are our feelings on faith? Do we feel that no matter what, the God of our understanding will protect us, nourish us, guide us? Or do we just throw our hands up in the air and say that we feel that this world just has no use in believing in anything because this world gives us no hope. Personally, I would have to say, yes, there is hope. And I don't want to give up faith just yet. There's a quote from the Proverbs of Buddha I found on the internet the other day while I was preparing for the speech, and uh, it goes along on a long journey of human life, faith is the best of companions, it is the best refreshment on the journey, and it is the greatest property. Buddha also is quoted as saying, faith is not belief without proof, but trust without reservation. Trust without reservation. I'm going to divert from my talk for a bit, and I'm going to bring your attention to this book. It's by uh, somebody from our ranks, actually, who used to be in Wednesday night uh, meditation, and it's Patrick Powell, and uh, the book is Still Nothing. It's uh, a brand new book. Uh, I was at another church. I ran into Patrick, and uh, he was uh, selling these books, and uh, Patrick's story is very, I'll leave it at the back for people to take a look at. I still haven't read all of it yet. But the point is, along with my talk today, I feel that Patrick's book pretty much puts a lot of things in perspective about faith, or lack thereof. Because Patrick described himself as more of an unbelieving, logic-seeking person. Right now, Mr. Spock's doing happy dance with my brother. <laughs> but uh, um, he didn't believe in any sort of spirituality, any chance of miracles, any chance of anything. He just thought, no, nope, it's black and it's white, and that's this. But then, slowly but surely, there were supernatural occurrences in his life. And he was forced to actually question, okay, can this be explained scientifically? Or is there something more? And I'm not going to say anything more about it. I would encourage people to read the book, talk to Patrick, uh, get a hold of a copy, because it's a great story. But going back to my comments on trust without reservation, I feel like what an incredible gift, a most powerful ability that must be. Speaking for myself, I think about the many Wednesday nights that I went to the meditations moderated by Bonnie. And, you know, I, I, would, I would say that I second guess myself a lot. I second guess what I saw, I second guess what I felt. I was not trusting without reservation. And now I feel that I was not only doing myself a great injustice, but for those of you who were with me, my brothers and sisters, I feel I was doing you a great injustice as well. You see, as I was writing down my thoughts for this morning's talk, a powerful emotion came upon me. Faith is like a chain which of course is only as strong as its weakest link. If my faith in myself is weak, and my faith in God and the universe is also weak, how can I expect myself to draw strength 
from you. I can't be an energy vampire. I can't take your faith and your strength and belief and try to absorb it into myself. I have to build it from my heart. And it occurred to me that uh, the last stanza of the poem Flanders Fields by Dr. John McCrae, it, uh, it also sort of reinforces this thought I have, or this philosophy, and, and uh, I'm going to read the stanza. It's, uh, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Field. To me, what that last line means that the dying, the, the comrades in arms of the soldiers that were carrying on in World War I, they were sort of saying to the living, take all that we wish for in life, for our loved ones, for the people that we're fighting for, for the cause, and run with it. And make sure that in, when we're on the other side, we can be satisfied and at peace that we know our death was not for nothing, that we died for something, that we died to keep the life that we knew going. And to me, that's very powerful. We need to help each other to be strong, but yet with the gentleness and the power of love, combined with the lightheartedness and good feelings we receive in humor, which I guess that's my role in life, <laughs> be the funny guy. <laughs> but we receive uh, a lot of blessings. And I feel that these two components of humor and love, they are much needed to help sustain our faith in whatever form of universal intelligence that we believe in and in believing in each other. I am seeing more clearly that how many philosophies and beliefs are really more dependent on one another than I ever considered before. I see now how many thoughts, or sorry, I see now how my thoughts, my mood, My deeds are all reflections of faith, and they really do affect the sensibilities of those around us. And that's a big thing to remember, that you always, I mean, you're going to have your up and your down days, and you're allowed. Nobody says you're not. But in order to sort of keep the faith going, and <coughs> keep the spirit of what all of us in this room are gathered here today to accomplish. we got to try to be the best that we can each and every day. In the string of thoughts I'm having as this talk progresses, I come to think about the story of faith that is one of my personal favorites. It is the story of the Roman centurion who asked Jesus to help heal his ailing servant. And the reason why I have this story uh, so much in mind is because I admire the centurion's faith and Jesus' healing abilities. The, the centurion just believed in Jesus so much so that he said to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you into my home. But I know if you just say the word, my servant shall be healed. Wow, like that's such faith. Such faith. I am so touched by this because when I was going through my colon cancer operation and chemotherapy at this time last year, you know, I, I, could, I could feel the good healing energies and, and the powerful amount of love that 
everybody had for me, working through all of you into me. But like the Roman centurion, I felt a sense of unworthiness. I, I believe it was caused by my feelings of not having the right amount of faith. I felt embarrassed and ashamed. Because deep in my heart, I know all of you love me. I know God loves me. But I allowed my ego to second guess all that. So again, I reiterate, how can I expect anyone here this morning to have faith if I am not willing to strengthen my own? Because we're all interdependent, we're all connected. And what one, when, when one person moved can affect the rest. And we all have seen that. My brothers and sisters, lately I've been feeling that we are on the edge of a momentous changes in our in both our personal and collective lives. And more than ever, our faith together with a good sense of humor and a great outpouring of love for one another is going to be needed. I don't know why. I just I, well like look at our news. Like I said, the example of Moncton, apparently a Yesterday there was also somewhere in the East Coast, I believe in Nova Scotia, somebody reported spotting somebody on a roof with a gun. In Vaughan, there's a man that committed some shootings. The uneasiness of this election, more than ever. Just so many things on this earth right now that are happening, and other things that I've heard from other speakers and whatnot. And I just feel that we, more than ever now, we have to bind together as a community, we have to have love and a good sense of humor and a lot of faith in God and one another in the process. These are going to be the weapons against the onslaught of depression, anarchy, and rage. I am feeling that that's what's waiting for us in future days to come. Now, as I was doing this speech, I was looking at the word faith, and it dawned on me that when I looked at the word faith, an acronym came to mind. Faith. Facing adversity in the here and now. I know and there's no N in faith, but still, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, something that I thought, and it's this is what faith allows us to do, to know that despite the obstacles that we all face in life, we can get through the darkness into the light with faith, love, humor. In closing, I would like to leave you a quote from Swami Chinmaya Nanda. And the, that is faith, is, faith is to believe what you do not see, the reward of which is you see what you believed. I think that's very beautiful. And I leave this with you with love and light. I say God bless. Thank you for listening to me today.